God, we're not gonna miss this wave of wealth that you're transferring to your people. I doubt. Bibles, your next level books, your notepads, your pens, your devices, whatever you're using in your possession. Uh, just want to take a few minutes. Uh, we've had so many amazing discussions just within the last few weeks uh, throughout this message series that's centered around financial literacy. Uh, but this Sunday, I'm going to do my best to bring this series to a conclusion. Uh, and we're going to revisit uh, chapter three of our next level book. Uh, which is uh, directly connected to uh, God elevating our lives to the next level. And uh, we've used as a biblical basis uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, particularly verse 12. And again, we're going to revisit that passage of scripture and share some prophetic points and details uh, this upcoming Sunday as I try my best to bring this series to a conclusion, but tonight uh, I want to follow up from where we left off this past Sunday on the four keys to unlocking financial abundance in your life. Just a few points that I want to make uh, to finalize this aspect of our discussion. The four keys to unlocking financial abundance in your life. Those four keys are number one, your seed, number two, your soil, number three, your stewardship, and number four, your strategy. Again, number one, your seed, number two, your soil, number three, your stewardship, and number four, uh, your strategy. I've got a few scriptures that I want to associate to each of these four keys as we do our overview and walk through them. Uh, I believe that these scriptures will continue to really push you and provoke you into the mindset, into the mentality uh, that I'm anticipating all of us to have with regard 
to understanding financial abundance. So uh, we've already established the fact, first and foremost, that uh, the first key, your seed, uh, is an instrument of increase as a sower. You should have already written that down if you're taking notes. Uh, your seed, your seed uh, is an instrument of increase as a sower. A good footnote to think about, uh, maybe want to underline or just highlight or underscore the word instrument uh, to remind you of how important your seed should be to you. Your seed is an instrument. It is an instrument. It is an instrument. Now I'm going to show you in just a few uh, minutes that at this level of your unlocking financial abundance, you shouldn't be as concerned about what can be used as a weapon as much as what can be used as an instrument. There's a fundamental difference between what can be used as a weapon and what can be used as an instrument. And to simplify my, my point, uh, sometimes with regard to your money, sometimes with regard to your finances, uh, you, you, you can't focus all of your attention on what you want of what you want to fight against. Sometimes that strength, that time, that energy and attention has to be directed towards what you're believing God for. If that makes sense. Sometimes you shouldn't waste your energy, your efforts. And in most cases, your seed trying to fix a lot of things that have already been broken. That might be a little better. You're so overwhelmed by debt that you definitely can't fix with what you currently have. That you're just thrown off on what you can develop in your now to at least create momentum to move forward. There's just some things today, they are what they are. But it should negate the fact that you still got to have a mode of operation to keep moving. Just mentioned to someone earlier that when you find yourself having fallen in a hole, the next best thing to do is to stop digging. <laughs> you get so focused on trying to dig your way out you get deeper in the hole you fell in. Right, yeah, right. Sometimes you just need to stop. You need to rethink. And instead of trying to fight, since we're talking about financial abundance, instead of trying to fight all your debtors, instead of trying to fight all your creditors, instead of trying to fight all the bad past dead bills, don't focus on the weapon until you figure out what your strategy is with your instrument. Because you can eliminate all of the debt. You can move all of the old, but still have no practical strategy for what you're going to do in the new. Only to come right back into the same situation because you used the weapon, but you didn't use the instrument. So make sure that you understand that your seed is an instrument of increase because you are a sower. We define the sower as, how many of y'all remember what we define the sower as? A professional giver. I also suggested to you uh, that your seed, which is an instrument, should always be reinforced, whether you wrote this down or not, it should always be reinforced with revelation, with motive, with intention, and with action. As I mentioned before, just because you doing something or giving something doesn't necessarily mean what you've done or what you're giving is a seed. What makes what you're doing, what makes what you're giving a seed is not just the act of doing, not just the act of giving, but it is the revelation, the motive, the intention behind the action. I got a good scripture for you. I want you to write this one down. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. 
And the main scripture is verse 11. I want you to go there if you can. Luke chapter 8. The main scripture is verse 11. But since we're having this discussion on the sea, just push back to verse 5. Your words are written in red. Jesus said, a soul went out to sow a seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air, the birds devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other seed fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he that has an ear, he that has ears, he that can hear, to hear, let him hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. And his disciples asked, Lord, we still miss the memo. What might this parable be? And Jesus, Jesus said unto them, unto you, to you as believers. So there's an exclusivity for you because you are a believer. There are some things that God is going to say to you that don't necessarily apply to other people. But notice he's talking about what, what is he talking about? What's the main character here? The seed. The main character is the seed. Because this thing fell on the sidewalk, the birds ate it, Right? Fell in the rocks and withered away. Yep. Fell in the thorns, got choked up. Finally fell on good grounds. It sprang up in a bit. The main character is the seed. So here's Jesus saying, unto you it is given to know, to know, to be intimately acquainted with the mysteries of the kingdom of God. That's a whole nother discussion. Because there are some things that God wants to do, I believe, in the area of our finances that won't make reasonable or logical sense. They are mysteries that only our understanding of the seed will be unlocked to us. So if I don't have an understanding of the seed, I might never put myself in the position to unlock that level of mystery on how to see to it that whatever it is I sow, that it springs up and produces multiplication. You see that? He says, to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. He says, but to others, it's, 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 it's just another story. Just another ploy for the church to get more tithes and offerings. It's just what we do around tax time at churches which is to talk about money. It, it, there's always uh, a natural or earthly or man-made motive behind it. But here Jesus is like, you know what? I've got some things that I want to share with you about this main character called the seed that once you get it, it's going to change your life. It's going to create multiplication because now you know what to do, but you also know how to get it done. Come on, that's the truth. Because if God gave you the what, and then he gave you the how, guess what? You won't be in the situation you're in. I mean, if he showed you how to leave this room and really go get the bag that you ain't never struggling again, you mean to tell me you're going to leave this room and go home and just pray about it? After you do it, you might not even call in tomorrow. You, you just quit. <laughs> you ain't going to have the courtesy to call in. Some people ain't. My point is there are mysteries that are relative to your situation. And guess what? Those mysteries are designated for you, but they have to be unlocked by the seed that God designates to you. Get that. 
So there are mysteries he's got for you in your personal financial situation. You, you have to believe that. There, there are things relative to your personal finances that are mysteriously hidden and you've reached a place in life where you don't know what else to do. You don't know how to get any further. And, and, and if you try to reason with this barrier, then your reason is going to force you to do with the seed what was done prior to a hidden good ground. Because you'll be beating the pavement, right? You'll be throwing it in the, in the thorns. You will be devouring it, not knowing that if I deploy it correctly, yeah. how God tells me to deploy it, it will, it's not, it's not the, the item that's representing my seed that I'm concerned about. It's not the recipient that's receiving the seed that I'm concerned about. My concern is being obedient with the revelation, with the motive, with the intention through my act so that whatever it is and whoever the recipient is, despite that, I unlock the mystery for my pending harvest. So that means you cannot always focus your attention on the recipient as much as the revelation. Because what if the recipient doesn't seem to be deserving? Right? He says, to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. Let's keep going. That seeing they might see and hearing they might not understand. So he's making it clear. This stuff I'm talking about right now, he's like, everybody ain't going to get it. But notice verse 11. He says, the parable is this. What is the next statement? Say what now? It's important. So don't just, don't just, you don't have to exaggerate the context of this text. You don't have to, you don't have to be extreme in your biblical view of this text. But don't just look at verse 11 from the perspective of the text without understanding that this is an introduction to a universal principle for you. I'll make it make more sense. From a universal perspective, from a broader general perspective as a believer, anytime I have a word from God on something, it is the word from God that I have on something, that's my seed. You got that? So, so he says the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So if the seed, let's just look at it universally or generally for a minute. Make sure you, I got a good class with me. Let's, let's just assume the seed is the word of God. So that means the word of God is what? If the seed is the word of God, that means the word of God is. Okay. So your money, your time, your talent, your service, your favor you do, that opportunity you provide for someone, that gift you bless others with. That, that sacrifice you make for that person or for that place with that thing. None of those things are actually the seed. Because the seed is I want you to see something. So when I'm giving my offering and I use the terminology oh I'm sowing a seed. It's not a seed unless it's reinforced. If it's not reinforced with the word, it's just money. If those three hours you gave him, and then you get in the car to justify three hours you just wasted by saying, well, I just sold that seed 
You saying it didn't make that three hours you just wasted a seed. Unless the three hours you gave was based on a word you previously received. That's why a sower is a professional giver. Because if I'm giving all my money and all my time and all my gifts and all my conversations and all my talents to people in places that are doing things that are not even relatively close to what God has told me to do, I'm just wasting it all claiming it is seed. And I'm trying to figure out why I ain't getting no harvest. I'm not sowing seeds. Because you ain't sowing a seed because you say it. You sow the seed. But when God says, how many to call him? And two hours later, you get off the phone. Even if you feel like, God, I just wasted two whole hours. I can't get them back. He says, don't worry, boo. It was a seed. So now when I show up and I give $20 and I only had $23 and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get gas for the week and I'm worried and I'm upset and I'm trying to figure out what God is going to do and who he's going to use. He's reminding me, don't worry, don't, don't worry, don't be concerned because those $20 were $20 to you, but it was a seed. What made that $20 a seed? What made that sacrifice a seed? What made that conversation a seed? It was the revelation of God's word that backed up what I gave. Now I got a little angle for, for you right here because some of you sold seeds that you didn't know were seeds just because you didn't have a revelation to classify it as a seed. And so God told me to tell you, I'm getting ready to bring some stuff back to your remembrance so you can see how amazing of a seed sower you actually are. You thought you wasted that year. You thought you wasted that time. You thought you wasted your skill. You thought you gave that money away. But God says, I've been tracking every seed that you've been sowing because I'm preparing. Without a word. My God. Wow. Yep. That's good. That's why I say I start out with no. I start out at no. Now everybody that know me know my default mode is I, I can't do it. You you gotta you gotta woo me to a year. Because sometimes it could just be in a conversation that I'm having because you're sharing me the situ sharing with me the situation and circumstance, and while I'm in the conversation, God say, "Go and do it." That's my word. There's some people that think they got over on you, and little did they know God used them to set you up for a harvest. Because the truth is, when you operate on this level of revelation, ain't nobody really tricking you out of nothing. So ain't even no need to be upset, to be angry, to be bitter about all the people, the places, and the things that you seem to have missed out on. It was a seed that you sowed, and now the seed is pushing you into a harvest. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. So the seed is what? So the next time you give those 20 bucks, that's old school language, 20 bucks. The next time you give that time, the next time you sow the seed, your job is to make sure that it's back up with the seed. Because if you give them two hours up and them two hours ain't backed up with the seed, it ain't a seed. If you give that time up, that talent, that treasure up, and it's not backed up with the seed, I'm talking about the seed of the revelation of his word, it will not be reinforced to go into the ground so it can begin the process of creating your harvest. So your seed is an instrument, not a weapon. That's not what we're focusing on right now. This is not a weapon. This is not a weapon. 
Your seed is an instrument of increase as a sower, which means you are a professional giver. You got it? Yes. And it must be reinforced by what? The word, the word of God. More specifically, the R word. Revelation. Revelation. That's very important. Revelation. That means I've got to do my due diligence and find out from God what do you want me to do? Yes. For example, you come to church tonight and in your mind you have a preconceived idea. I'm going to get these 20. This is an anointed on 20. And I'm just going to get 20. No, I just want to show you something. How you're, you're, you're not operating as a professional giver. And again, we're in the context of church. So don't just think it's all about you giving an offering. I'm using it as an example to contextualize this conversation, okay? So let's just assume that you've come with a preconceived idea, not a revelation. God ain't tell you to give 20. Right, right. You you just you have a preconceived idea. You've 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 already previously decided how much you can give, not based on revelation, based on budget based on when you get paid, based on what you got in the bank, based on everything except revelation. Now, here's, now here's, here's, what, here's what happens. You give no room for God to tell you what to do once you're in the setting. Right? Right? right. right? Yes. You, 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 you position yourself to receive revelation because what if God, what if God, and I don't got to go up, what if God say 15? Right. Right. And you got this hot 20. But if you had said 15, you could have went by QT and got changed. Because right. yeah. in service, when you gave the 15, you saw somebody that didn't have nothing, and then he says, give them that five. Because he want to do double, so he's like, I'm going to double your seed up. I'm going to give you more options with what you got left. What if God say get 21s? Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. You see? But it's revelation. It's revelation. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word. And here we come with that 20. Already preconceived in our mind. And then we want to throw Luke 6 and 38 on it. God, you say you and I give. You don't be in God like, no, nah, it don't work like that. Not on this level of mystery. You don't, you don't, you, like you outside, you ain't even unlocked the door. We're trying to unlock, the, unlock financial abundance. I want to get in. I want to be a part of the surplus. I want to be the conduit through which other people can come on in because I ain't stuck outside with a preconceived idea of what I think because of a scripture God wants me to do. And guess what? It could be like that on your job. It could be like that in the store. It could be like that with your family. It could be like that. So sometimes you've got to give yourself room, but you don't give yourself that kind of room when you're always fighting what's behind you instead of using what God has given you as an instrument to build what's in front of you. Yes. Yes. Second key, your soil. Was that good? Yes. We established the fact that your soil is a womb or an incubator for the increase. So so, so here notice. Your seed is an instrument. But your soil is a womb. So now I've got to be very strategic. As to where. So there has to be a priority to this where. There has to be. There has to be some level of. Of, of methodology. To my where. Because if I prioritize my where. I always have my lifeline. Secure to know. That I've done my due diligence. Have you ever just had something you needed to do for someone who was more important than someone or something else, but that someone or something else caught you before you got with them and you did it. And now when you got with them, you couldn't do what you wanted to do and you feel bad. It hurts your spirit. But if you would have prioritized it, guess what? It would have been done even before you went to that because now you did your due diligence to secure what your lifeline is. That's really a part of the whole system of tithing and giving and showing up and serving and supporting. It really helps to build the discipline we need for consistency. 
That was the whole idea of the miracle morning. Not that we can't wake up in the morning, but can you wake up and do all six of those things that reflect those 15 areas of your life every day? That's the whole idea. So if I only do a hundred sit-ups today and a hundred sit-ups tomorrow and a hundred sit-ups the next day, but a hundred days from now, I can look back and say, I only did a hundred, but I did it consistently every day as opposed to not having a prioritized methodology. And every 15 days, I blew my stomach out trying to do a thousand. And now I'm periodic, I'm inconsistent, and I have not built or developed the discipline to be consistent. When God says, I want you to be as consistent as you possibly can because the soil is a womb. And so when the seed is sown, you got to give me time to work on the womb. Because I don't want, watch this, your harvest to be deformed. I don't want your harvest to be premature. I don't want your harvest, watch this, to come out when I know you ain't ready for it and it ain't ready for you. So I want you to be consistent. I want you to be steadfast so that when you get it, you got it and you can keep it. Here's another scripture for the soil. And that is uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Go to it very quickly. We only got a few more minutes. Was that good? 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. And I want you to look at verse 36. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 36. Wait a minute. Scroll up to 58. We're going to go back to 36. I just want you to see the last photo. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 58. We'll go back to 36. But 58, you see it? Therefore, my beloved brethren, what does he say you need to do? Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now, why is he ending that scripture like that? He wants you to know when anything is sold into the soil, you need to be consistent in the process. Yes. Because yes. yes. I want a harvest and the seed ain't died yet. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I plant the mango seed, seed and next week I want a ripe mango. <laughs> and the seed like, can you give me a season? Can you give me time? And then you pluck the green mango Cause you just gotta have it Cause there's a little yellow spot on it Cause you better put in some vinegar, salt, and pepper Y'all don't know that about Y'all don't know that about that up here do you In Florida we get mangoes And put them in vinegar, salt, and pepper But here's my point Here's my point The mango is bitter Because the tree was not ready to release it It was still It was still in the In the, in the form And it still had the taste of the seed stage. So there are certain things that we want to taste. There are certain things that we want to eat off. There are certain things we want to feast on. And it still tastes like it did when we put it in the ground. So now I'm back in the same situation this month that I was in three months ago. Because I bit into what I thought was a harvest when the truth is it's still a seed. And God says while the process of death and life is taking place between the seed and the harvest. Here's what I want Next Level Church to do. I want Next Level Church to be steadfast. I want you to be unmovable. I want you to always abound, watch this, in the work of the Lord. Just keep doing what you're doing every... I know the job ain't paying you what you're worth, but keep abounding in the work of the Lord because at some point your labor, not on that job, your labor, not in the world, your labor, not in the system, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Yes, yes. Church, 
somebody to tell them the harvest is on the way. Tell them you just got to make it through the process. Woo, I got to get out of here. I said the harvest is on the way, but you just got to make it through the process. I don't know when the process is going to end, but it may be your ending tonight. It may be your ending tomorrow. It may be your ending this month. But whenever the process ends, the harvest is on its way. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. David said, taste and see yeah. hey, that the Lord is good. Yeah. God said, I'm getting ready to give you a reason. Don't miss this. I'm getting ready to give you a reason to smack your lips. Yeah. Oh, my. I'm getting, ready to, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to give you a reason to smack your... You see, I know some people, they can't get their mind off of it being this certain time of the year, but God says all that is just bonus. That's regular. That's extra. That's what the world can do, but I want to show you what your God can do because nobody knows the seeds that you sow at the darkest times of your life. Nobody knows the days that you wondered and worried how God was going to come through your children needed you to stand up and be strong. But God says when this harvest shows up. I said when God says when this harvest shows up, it's going to make up, watch this, for lost process time. When my harvest shows up. When my harvest shows up, repeat after me. When my harvest shows up, it's going to make up for lost process time. Every dark day, every depressed week, every worried month, every troubled year, I'm prophesying to you right now. God says when the harvest shows up, it's going to make up the lost process time. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, the bullshit. I'm the bullshit. Come on, the bullshit. Come on, I need you to lift up your voice and begin to minister to him. Because God said, I'm shifting somebody into a makeup season. I'm the big home, the bullshit. I'm shifting somebody into a makeup season. You've been living under pressure long enough. I'm gonna make it up. You've been stressed out, wondering and worried long enough. I'm gonna make up. I gotta show you how mighty of a God I am. I gotta prove to you that I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm your provider. If I said it, that settles it. I'm about to show up. I know you feel something going on in your spirit, but while you're ministering to him, let me read 1 Corinthians 15 and 36. Paul says that which you sow is not quickened unless it dies. God says, I want you to get into the incubator of giving me some worship. I want you to get into the incubator of giving me glory because every time you shed your tears, every time you lift up your voice, every time you give me the glory, every time you magnify me in the midst of your process pain, I'm bringing that harvest to life. I'm bringing that harvest out of the ground. As you cry out to God tonight, I prophesy that it's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. And then they be so Except a seed die in your womb tonight. Except what you sacrificed all these years dies in your womb tonight. 
Accept all the money that you gave away. Accept all the time that you gave away. Accept all the heartaches that you went through. Accept all the pain that you endured. Accept it dies in the womb of your spirit tonight. The harvest won't come up, but if you cry out, He's bringing it to life. He's bringing it to life. He's bringing it to life. Hey. Mandele be kuda badada. Shara ya desha. Andore be de shoto. Makoma satana ma sotona mahaya. Mandele be You've been crying out to God, Lord, when you gonna show up for me? You got Nick C in my soul. So you've been feeling the pressure the last couple weeks. You've been sensing yes. something is trying to pull you into a dark place. And you've been trying to make sense of it. And God told me to tell you tonight, it's the death process that's taking place. I'm causing the seed of the past several years to die in your womb. I'm causing the sacrifices that you've gone through in the last few years to die in your womb. I'm causing what you thought people took from you, what you thought was robbed from you, what you thought they tripped you out of. I'm causing that seed to die in your womb. And when it comes back up, it's going to have a new body. When it comes back up, it's going to take another form. When it comes back up, it's going to look like where you're headed. I need somebody to cry out to him for the process.
Uh, what you gonna do tomorrow? Germinate? What's gonna happen Saturday? Germinate? How it's gonna look Sunday? Germinate? I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up. I'm on no shine my soul to my massage. My baby cut the big cool shot out of those sata. I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up in your family. I'm stirring it up in your children. I'm stirring it up in your grandkids. I'm stirring it up in your great grands. I'm stirring it up in your mama. I'm stirring it up in your father. I'm stirring it up in your sisters and brothers. I'm stirring it up on your job. I'm stirring it up in your bank account. I'm stirring it up in your credit. I'm stirring it up in your life. I'm stirring it up in your health. I'm stirring it up. He's 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 stirring it up.